going live now we have Jiday from Go Easy. Thank you, Jiday, for joining our webinar today. I'm thrilled to have you. Um, I know that you're a very busy person, right? How many how many uh, <clears throat> speaking sessions you had this week? Um, I've had one. I had one on uh, on Tuesday at the CDM mm -hmm. Media CDO Summit on Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So. Um, <laughs> Today, uh, you are our guest to talk to Pai. Uh, you are one of our beloved customers, uh, long-term partners, and hopefully a great design partner for, for future innovation. But today we're uh, in, in another session, like we want you to speak to the community. Uh, as you may see, uh, Customer Advisory Board of Octopi uh, is thrilled to have you too. You're part of it. Um, and uh, we we hope that we will learn from you many things, but today we're going to speak generally about your path to data democratization. Uh, so we are starting the webinar. Thank you all for joining. Um, after this webinar, you will get a recording for the ones that didn't uh, have time to join us live. We'll get a, a recording afterwards, but uh, thank you. And let's hit the button of share. Okay. Okay. Hope that you all see it. Right. So we're starting with an, this session that we hope that you learn um, how, how to get there. I, I know that lots of people in the community speak about data democratization and it's a hard path. Uh, and uh, we will learn from you today, how, how are you doing it? Uh, keep it simple, keep it informal. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, if, if we could be together in the same living room, we're just having a nice chat in the evening with a glass of wine. We don't have the wine, you are far away, but I don't care. So let's keep it like, like this. And we want to understand how you use actionable data and how did you use it to become the driving force for your company success? So uh, I'm going to introduce you, uh, but for, I will start with myself like really briefly. I'm Zinette Ezra, VP product at Octopi, 25 years in technology, but I'm not that important person today, it's you. Uh, Jide, uh, please introduce yourself. I'm Jide Adioye. I'm the Director of Business Intelligence at GoEasy. I've been at GoEasy for about seven years now and I've been in the BI and data space for over 15 years. Um, started at GoEasy as a senior BI solution architect and had to build our BI function from the ground up to what it is today. Um, so really privileged and honored to be here with all of you to share about our part to data democratization. Okay. So uh, we had a lot of discussions uh, in the past few weeks, and um, I remember that you know you, you started your journey at Go Easy with a let's let's call it a limited data warehouse capacity with a small team of users. Uh, but this is how you start. I'd like to learn from you. How did you progress from there? So let's start with the problems. How did you face it? How did you cope with it first? Yeah, I mean, our journey is like that of a basic car, as you can mm -hmm. see on the screen, when you buy a car and it just has the basics in the car. It doesn't have all the gadgets you need. It doesn't have the enhanced stereo. Uh, it doesn't have the pull-up seats. It's just very simple. And um, essentially, you only, you're only able to use the basics because you don't have all the enhanced functionality of the car to be able to use the other pieces um, of the car to function you know, in a way you would like it to function. So when I look at our journey, that's essentially how we started. Um, what we had was just 50 users on our platform um, when I joined. And the reason why we had only 50 users was because the data warehouse at that point in time was only built for specific reporting requirements. It didn't have all the holistic enterprise and operational data that was required to be able to provide decision support data for the business. 
So as a result, you had a lot of users that essentially had their own under under the table reporting systems because their data was not available in the data warehouse. So we started with 50 users and today we have 2,500 users. And some of the things that we did, um, if we just move over to the next slide, um, some of the things that we did was first of all, focusing on what the users need versus what they say. Um, so we discovered that even the reports that were on our platform was not actually used um, because essentially it was not what the users required. It was what they felt that they needed. And as a result of that, the reports were just sitting there. We were sending reports via email. We also had reports on the system that were hardly viewed at all because it wasn't what they needed. So we had to find out what they actually need. And how we did this was to form a power user BI group. And essentially this power user BI group consisted of all subject matter experts from business units, functional areas and product areas. And what each of those subject matter experts did for us was to explain their particular business unit or functional area by telling us how they operate, how they make decisions, and also how they use data to make those decisions and where they're getting their data from now. Now, on going through that exercise, what we now began to do is to see how we can bring in that data into our data warehouse. The issue was that our data warehouse was already established in terms of data mm -hmm. architecture, so it wasn't flexible and scalable to be able to add additional fields to it. So as a result, what we had to do was to build on top of it. So it's like adding fixes and patches essentially to your car. So you remember the picture, um, you know, two slides ago, uh, yeah. where it was a basic car, you know, with just the basics, um, not enhanced stereo and so on and so forth. This is where we got to. We added quite a lot of tables on top of it in the form of stored procedures or views um, to be able to meet those needs. And we ended up with a car like this, whereby you have so many gadgets. As you can see, you even have a um, postal box <laughs> um, on top of this car. You have extra wheels on the side. Essentially made our data warehouse now look like a cobweb um, in general. So this was the first point we got to whereby let's actually bring all the, all the data that is required for our different business units, functional areas and product areas that they need to be able to make decisions, get there first of all, and then now begin to move into essentially what are the business strategies and how can we meet these business strategies with smart architecture? So if you just move over to the next slides in it, um, we are looking at it from a perspective of what problem is the business trying to solve? That's always the question we ask our business units or functional areas or product areas. What problem are you trying to solve? Based on that, we understand what the business needs are and we understand where the business is going as well. Another thing that we do is we always listen to what our CEO and our senior leaders are saying in terms of the strategic direction of the business. And why that is very important is you need to be able to have that understanding on where the business is going and how you fit from your role perspective into where the business is going, right? Because if you're able to understand where the business is going and fit your role in, in other words, BI or data, you are now able to build effective decision support solutions with data that will enable the business to drive decisions for growth. And in turn, now translate that into smart data architecture as well, which is very key. Another thing that we've been able to do is we're the gatekeepers of all the KPIs and measures in our business. Our KPIs are divided into three groups, our business units. So we have three business units that go easy, easy financial, easy home, and land care. Right now, our focus has been easy financial and easy home. We began to work with the land care folks to be able to bring in their KPIs too as well. But what we've done is that we've been able to group it in four buckets. We had a situation where we have single KPIs that have multiple definitions. So what we've done is to say, hey, we can't have multiple definitions for one KPI. 
we need to have a single definition and business rule for that KPI. We're not saying the others will not be required. They'll be required, but we can't call them the same name. So that's one. Then two, we also have outdated KPIs that are either no longer in use by the business because of how the business has evolved. So what does we're doing with those KPIs is to sunset them. Also, this outdated KPI is the second group. Basically, some additional components need to be added to them as well because of how the business has evolved. So what are those components that need to be added? We work with the business teams to understand what those components are. We're adding those components to the KPIs so that they can evolve. And then last but not the least, the new KPIs as a result of the evolution of the business too that we need to, we need to add. It's very important that the key performance indicators and, and measures are very, very clearly stated because that's actually what drives decision support data. Without this, you're not able to drive decision support. And then we've also grouped our users into three categories. We have the minimalist, we have the curious, and we have the enthusiast. The minimalist are those who are basically analysts. They just want to see their KPIs see how well they're doing to be able to measure their performance and create strategies for the current day of work to know how to drive more sales. So they're just concerned about looking at the KPIs. They look at the KPIs and essentially get their numbers and move on. And then you also have the curious who want to do the same thing, but they want to do a little bit more. They want to be able to see those KPIs in different views. Some of them want to be able to add chats, graphs, and so on to be able to actually see it more intuitively. Um, some of them want to be able to derive some simple additional KPIs from those KPIs to also be able to drive better results. And then we have the last group, which we consider the enthusiast. The enthusiasts, they want to actually self-serve. So essentially, they just want access to all their KPIs. They don't need you to necessarily build dashboards or reports for them, but they want to be able to go right into the data, deep dive for advanced insights to be able to make certain decisions. These guys are people who deal with targets and forecasts, so they're trying to compare their actuals to the forecast numbers to see how well the business is doing and possibly adjust the forecast numbers or make it higher if the business, of course, has been able to surpass those forecasts slash targets. So those are the three groups that we have and essentially how we're meeting the needs of these three groups. Now, this the next very, step, This is a yeah, very clever, yeah, go ahead. I, <laughs> I have to say, to, this is a very clever way to enable that self-service because eventually the essence of data democratization is exactly that. So you open up, you know, you went from 50 users to how many users today? Uh, we have over 2,500 users now. Wow, this yeah. is this is crazy numbers. Seriously, <laughs> chapeau, okay. And now what's the next step? So the next step is to be able to get to this car. As you can see, this is a futuristic car. You remember on the first slide, we had a very busy car um, that didn't have a lot of gadgets in it. And then we went into adding gadgets on top of the basic car. And it looked like that cobweb you saw on the third slide. But what we want to be able to do is have a futuristic car like this, that everything you require is already in and it can do multiple things. As you can see, you're able to fly with this car. You can also drive, <laughs> um, you know, with the car. You can also leave in the car, right? Hopefully one day we get a car like this. This will cut our mortgage yeah, um, costs <laughs> and us <laughs> having to buy houses. But yes, this is where we want to be able to get to. And to help us get here, this is why a platform like Octopi is very important from a data catalog and a data lineage perspective. Because with, with Octopi, you're able to see the end-to-end -end data flow lineage of what you have in your system. You're able to see each data point, whereas if you didn't have an Octopi, you would have had to go into your data repository or data warehouse, whatever you have, and actually now start unwinding whatever your code is to find out where, where all your sources are. But with Octopi, you're able to see your end-to-end -end data flow in minutes, the lineage. What this helps with is root course analysis. Um, there are many times here at Goezy where we've had um, an issue and for days we're trying to figure out what the root course is. 
right? Because there's so many layers. Like I said, if you remember the um, car with all the gadgets, right? We built on top of the data warehouse. So because we built on top of the data warehouse, there's so many multiple data points to look at that if you go into the data warehouse, it will take you sometimes days to be able to figure out what the issue is. So what we do with Octopi when we have an issue is to put in the field in the data flow and image to be able to find out where that field is coming from. And that way it helps us to be able to identify the issue in minutes, essentially. And this is why it's very, very effective because you're able to get to your solution faster because you're able to identify the issues quickly. The other thing that Octopi helps us with is impact analysis. If we want to make a modification, like I said, we are working on revamping some of our KPIs right now, where there's single definitions or updating the outdated KPIs and so on. What we do from an impact analysis perspective is to search for that field and understand all the reports slash dashboards or data processes in our data warehouse it impacts. And that way we're able to evaluate that if we change it, what's going to be the downstream impact and how can we minimize the downstream impact that doesn't affect us keeping the lights on when the change is made. The other aspect we use this for is for data cataloging. Now, you, you, you cannot have effective data cataloging if you don't have a lineage. You don't know what's in your lineage, right? Because the lineage impacts the data catalog. With the lineage, you're able to see all the different fields you have. You're able to understand the flow, and you're also able to understand what the business rules slash definitions of those fields are. And you can now input that into your data um, catalog. Why the data catalog is important is that sometimes, like I said earlier, you have different variations of a single KPI, and you want to understand what the difference is. So you go into the data catalog and, for example, put in sales. You could have sales by finance, sales by product. If you want to see that breakdown, the data catalog enables you to see that faster. The data catalog also helps with impact analysis too um, as well because you are able to see also all the different components within that field in the data catalog as it links to all the different sources. And this is why Octopi is very powerful you know, for us. It has enabled us to be able to see our data lineage effectively of all the different data pipelines we have for our reporting decision support data processes. It has enabled us to be able to do root cause analysis effectively, as well as impact analysis and utilizing the data catalog to understand the different business rules of all our fields that we have in our data warehouse and also in our, in our report data platform, which is MicroStrategy. Um, you're about to watch a video now that describes mm -hmm. everything I said. This video was done by one of our senior managers, Bran Korovic. I will pass it back to Zinet to show us this video okay. on how we are effectively using Octopi. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so Bran has recorded for us a very nice uh, video. Okay, I start. Hello everyone. My name is Bran and I'm the Senior Manager of Enterprise BI Reporting at GoEasy. Today, I'll be giving you a brief walkthrough of some of the ways we leverage Octopi to make certain aspects of our responsibilities easier and much more efficient. To set the stage, what we like most about Octopi is its ability to offer a full end-to-end -end data and BI lineage, all the way from SSIS packages through to MicroStrategy object, allowing us to quickly understand dependencies and perform rapid impact or root cause analysis. Today, we'll be focusing on three real-life examples that have come up recently at GoEasy and how we leveraged Octopi to accelerate our findings. The first use case will involve performing a root cause analysis on a daily report that was suddenly sent out with no data. The second use case will go over answering the common question of, is this table or data source still needed and who is using it? And the last use case is to determine the impact of a proposed change in a system of record and the effort required from our team to action it. Starting with the first use case, we ran into an issue a couple of weeks ago where one of our regular daily reports called PCO report suddenly gets sent out to the business users uh, with no data. That's not something we want to see, so we quickly jumped onto uh, Octopi to help us find the root cause for this issue. 
this is the cross-system lineage dashboards uh, dashboard on our portal. And on the right side, under reports, analytics, and information consumer object, we're going to start by looking at the PCO report in question. Now, we have a couple of results coming back, but with an understanding of the actual report that was impacted, uh, we're going to click on this PCO report with prompt so we can understand the cross-system lineage. Okay, so we have, uh, we have a few things coming up here. Uh, we have the PCO report with prompt, which is our end state, our end uh, microstrategy object. We see that it is dependent on this uh, intelligent cube, which is the data set. And then this data set is pulling data from uh, what looks like a view called a view PCO report in our EW and hog database. Great. So with this, we already have some information about where the data is coming from, and we can follow the lineage backwards. Uh, we see the view is dependent on a table called RPD PCO report. Um, and then this table is being loaded by uh, one of our store procedures called PCO report load. And then finally, the store procedure has several uh, dependencies uh, where it's uh, getting its data from. We have a transactional historical table, another historical table, yet another historical table, quite a few objects here. Uh, so from, from this stage, we were able to get an understanding of where the data was coming from. And uh, now we can take a look at uh, these individual tables and see if there is uh, any data missing within them. Within about five minutes from checking the historical tables in particular, we were able to identify that this particular one uh, was uh, missing data for the prior business date, uh, even though everything else was loaded. And we were able to report that to our data operations team and we were able to look into and resolve the issue for us uh, pretty quickly. So overall, uh, this, this entire process took less than 30 minutes from, um, from having the issue reported by the business users to us being able to um, understand the root cause uh, by having Octopi uh, have an integrated end-to-end -end lineage uh, that we can leverage very quickly. For our second use case, we're going to be leveraging Octopi to answer a couple of questions that our data engineering team had for us on a project recently, which is where they wanted to understand how a particular table is being used and also by whom. So let's start in this uh, middle page or this middle section rather on the cross-system lineage dashboard to look up the, uh, the table in question. So it was uh, or it is called LU loan action. So we can start by searching for it. And let's uh, let's get that process and lineage going. Now, there's going to be quite a few objects here uh, once Octopi finishes loading this. Uh, and yeah, here they are. So uh, once I saw this, my immediate thought was just to let our data engineering team know, yep, don't touch it. Don't even look at it. There, there's way too many dependencies. The regression testing alone would be a nightmare. But uh, that, that wasn't quite enough. I uh, still wanted to see, okay, who is using it and how, uh, et cetera. So a couple of things pop up here and we immediately see references to Clea. Uh, there's one here, there's a Clea dashboard being referenced here, a whole bunch of objects, uh, different teams look like they're setting up their own versions of the dashboards of MicroStrategy. Quite a lot of things going on. Um, a lot of things going on the, the insights we're getting basically immediately through this process and lineage uh, which is great but uh, other than just saying well there are a lot of dependencies uh, we wanted to get a sense of okay well well how many right to help with that uh, Octopi has this uh, great feature which is download as CSV so we can essentially get an export of this lineage into Excel uh, for further processing so that's great but to, uh, we won't spend too much time on that, but for the second component, which is, okay, but how is this lookup table being used? Uh, or what is the logic that we're using to leverage it? Uh, for that, we can take uh, one of these store procedures. So we'll take this Clio dashboard load version three, and let's go into the inner system lineage just to see uh, what we can do from within the tool without having to leverage something like uh, SSMS to uh, look up the store procedure and get it, uh, get the code uh, from there. Okay, so on the right side, uh, we have a column, uh, column mapping. Uh, we won't spend too much time on that right now, 
But uh, let's focus on this window on the left where we can see the actual SQL script of this store procedure. So let's start by looking at, okay, where is loan action being referenced? Okay, looks to be in about uh, 14 places. Let's see some highlights. Okay, we have a fact loan action. Yeah, we have a lookup loan action. That's great. Uh, let's see where the alias is being referenced. So we'll do uh, LLA. Okay, so we're picking up the action ID from there. That's great. Uh, it's being joined. Uh, good, good, good. And then we can, okay, we're also finding uh, uh, the uh, loan action table being referenced uh, in the where statement. So there's some logic for specific IDs, etc. So uh, what this basically allowed us to do is get a quick understanding of uh, not just for this store procedure, but for others that appear in the lineage uh, within the confines of one tool, uh, what the logic is or how we're leveraging uh, this particular table, uh, who is using this data, just in, uh, just in case it, uh, it gets changed or any adjustments uh, are made to it, we have an understanding of the type of analysis we would do or the regression testing required to ensure everything is seamless uh, and straightforward uh, after the change is made and Octopi made that process uh, much faster and more streamlined than it otherwise would be. For our third use case, we're going to see how we leveraged Octopi to answer a question that came up as part of a project recently, which proposed changing one of our services or the label for one of our services called Easy Verify to Easy Banking. And the question that came up is, uh, what is the impact to BI or data? And how much effort would it be to action this change? So to help with that, uh, and we've spent uh, enough time looking at the cross-system lineage at this point. So let's, look, let's take a look at how the uh, automated data catalog that Octopi has uh, can help answer these types of questions. Okay, so with the data catalog open, uh, we see, and these are just my filters from having played around with this before, uh, but uh, I have narrowed down the filters to more uh, microstrategy objects. So by uh, unselecting things like tables, use columns, uh, or other SQL, uh, SQL objects. Uh, so we can narrow down to what do we have in MicroStrategy that references Easy Verify. So let's put that uh, keyword in and see what we get. Okay, we're seeing some uh, some objects coming back. Uh, there's about 514 total assets to reference Easy Verify. Um, and we can see, uh, okay, there's some, uh, there's some facts, there's some attributes uh, or attributes that exist in, in folders where uh, Easy Verify is mentioned, so that's great. Um, so this gives us a sense of all of the objects that we have in our BI environment where Easy Verify is mentioned in some way, shape, or form. Now, total of 500 objects is quite a bit. Uh, we can either narrow down the list further here in the data catalog, or we can leverage one of these nifty features, which is to get an export of these results uh, in an Excel file. So let's take a look. We're going to click OK and see what we get and what that looks like in Excel. And we've got our file back called data catalog export. Let's open it up and let's see what we have. Okay. So what we got here is a pretty great uh, export of all of the objects that we were interested in with the Easy Verify label. And from here, uh, we can do additional processing to figure out uh, what it is we want to we want to narrow down to. Uh, we can search uh, search further for uh, objects just containing uh, Easy Verify in the name, and we see there is about 71 uh, objects of different uh, of different types. Uh, that might need to be changed or relabeled or adjusted uh, in some way. So what this allowed us to do is, uh, again, within uh, less, than, less than half an hour, uh, have an understanding of uh, where the changes might be required if the business decided to proceed with that suggestion to rename Easy Verify uh, to Easy Banking. And we have a very clear, clear set of essentially requirements for our own team as to where changes are required uh, to fulfill that uh, to fulfill that ask. In summary, based on just the three brief use cases that we looked at today, we were able to quickly see how Octopi is able to assist the data or BI team in their regular work. 
In the first use case, we were able to leverage the cross-system lineage to determine the root cause of a reporting issue within 30 minutes. In the second use case, we were able to once again leverage the cross-system lineage to advise our data team on the dependencies to a data source, as well as get an understanding on how the data was being used by being able to take a look at the store procedure directly in Octopi using the inner system lineage. Lastly, we were able to conduct an impact and effort analysis to propose business change by leveraging the Octopi data catalog to quickly gather the list of objects that would need to be adjusted to fulfill the business requirement. Hope you enjoyed that presentation. Thank you for listening and have yourself a wonderful day. Okay, this was a great demo run by Pavran. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Yes, okay. it's an amazing demo. Brand, Brand did a fantastic job. Just Thank so you, Bran. Everything we do. Well done, Bran. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to our presentation. Um, just to recap, basically, what we saw together is something that we are promoting with our customers and community. We do see the data management lifecycle uh, as something that you know needs to be adopted more and more. And we already see GoEasy actually doing this, right, Jude? We we saw absolutely yeah. yes, we are we are actually doing this um, in in great detail as you saw with the with the demo brand just um, just did. You know we are using every aspect of Octopi. We're using the cross system lineage. We're using the inner system lineage. We're also using um, the data catalog um, capabilities to be able to understand what needs to be done from a data governance and data management best practices um, standpoint. Um, constantly, every single month, we're reviewing what we have, what we can improve, and what we, ne we need to get rid of because we're able to see it clearer now with the catalog and the lineage that uh, the lineage that Octopi provides us. Um, so it's been a very powerful platform for us to be able to manage our data effectively and efficiently. So the path to democratization is basically starting with a mindset. Uh, I guess it's not mind the gap, it's mind the business. Uh, and um, I, as a product manager, know very well that sometimes when you are being asked what you need, you, you tend to be prescriptive and you don't speak about the problem and you speak, oh, I need this solution. It, it's right. how our minds are programmed to, to think. And our job is to actually ask questions and to predict that my, my be, maybe something that they will need in the future. And the best way, and I truly um, value your, your point of view on KPIs. I think that you no know, KPIs is something that is tangible. You can relate to it. It's, it's achievable. You got this. You got this three KPIs, let's move to, to the next one, right? As opposed to let's have 10 KPIs that nobody can monitor. Um, and I think that it's, it's a great way to, to put it in terms of methodologies. We saw also that you're using documentation as a way of life. I think documentation is something that it's truly missed. Uh, covering the right things, the, the, the important things, not governing everything. Um, and I already saw in the demo that uh, you're using Octopi also to make sure that you, you know you're applying the right regressions and testing. You know how can you plan a change without understanding the you know impact uh, upstream and downstream, and how do you make sure that you're not breaking uh, the nice dashboards and reports that you have prepared for the two thousand users. Um, yep. And I also, in particular, love the way that you know Brent talked about oh. Uh, how to speak to the data engineers in that sense. So don't touch it. I'm afraid that you'll break it, right? Yeah. But now you can see, <laughs> and it, it was a bit scary, right? Oh my gosh, how many how many things you have there, right? And, I, and I'm pretty sure that it's not the most complicated map that you have, but- Oh no, fact, it, it isn't, trust me. Right? We had some man <laughs> was trying to be polite to everyone to not yeah. show us the complex ones we have. We have some really complex ones that if you touch any field, it impacts over like 50 processes that wow. are very major um, to our decision support data. So yeah, this, this is um, a mid complex one <laughs> that Brand showed you, but they're more complex ones for sure. 
And lastly, to the last point is to actually empower the organization. Our time to value today nowadays is everything. Um, and we need a, a good collaboration in that terms that um, they get what, you know, what's in it for them. Uh, and there is also, you know, that rush to insights all the time. I need the insight to, to take a decision. I need it like yesterday. And there is a pressure on the tech team, data team to deliver faster than before. And the fact that you can use Octopi and take care of something that it's maybe critical to the business in a matter of minutes as opposed to days and weeks and maybe more, uh, it's something that I, I truly value that you, you're using. And I know that our customers uh, also value that as well. Um, now we are getting to the end of the session, but I see that we have some questions today. So I will, uh, let's see, pick, let's pick two questions, okay? I think we have time, uh, take more mi few minutes. Uh, so let me stop sharing and just start reading the questions. So we have here someone, okay, is asking about his struggle, the struggle on deciding on the right governance framework. Oh, and I know that the, there is a large, you know, there are huge debates. And that, w w how do you start? You have that data governance framework in place. I know from customers that they are struggling because they have a compliance issue. You know, the, the, the auditing team said, you're not compliant. You need to have a framework in place. You are not seeing how the data flows and so on and so on. So the rush is, let's, let's implement a data catalog. And then say, they say, but you need to, to show to us how the data is flowing. So we also need the data lineage. So what's your take on this? How, how should you start? This is the first Well, question. I think the starting point always has to be the data lineage. Um, like I said earlier, you can't have a data catalog without understanding your lineage, right? Um, because the key is to brand's demo, how it was showing, for example, the lineage of that particular field we're looking at and all the different data sources and data points. You need to have that full holistic view to be able to interpret that into a catalog description or a definition for that particular field. So without the lineage, you can't have an effective data catalog. If you build the data catalog first, it will be very segmented because it will not have all the different data points within that particular field. Right, So the advice always is to start with the lineage and then you can now build your catalog. It only makes your catalog way better and more effective to use. And also for users who are not technical, if you're giving them access, they're able to understand it better because it has all the different components within each field because you have an effective data lineage. It's a, it's a great answer. I will add on this that, um, and this is you now learning from others um, that I work with, they are starting with data lineage also because they don't know what they have. Uh, many are speaking about a black box or something that is completely shut down. They can't see uh, or know how the data is flowing and if they need it. I think that the, the greatest point is, do I need it? Who is using it? How right. it's being used? Yep. Um, and then uh, what they and, and then we talked about the complex map. So <laughs> sometimes at the beginning, we're onboarding a new customer and say, "Yeah, of course, I need everything." Okay, great. And they're opening the maps and say, "Oh, oh my God, what do I see here? How how can I start?" And, and the next thing they oh need, we need to clean. We need to have a cleansing project for the things that are not being used or consumed. And then after the cleansing project, they are applying the framework of data catalog because, and this is right, you need to govern the important things, right? Other, otherwise, you like, completely like, you show like 600, uh, six, how many how many assets on MicroStrategy? I saw like a huge number, I don't remember oh, the yeah, number. We, we, have, we have a huge, huge number. You know, right. and you're, you're absolutely correct, that One thing we have to do first of all, is we had to embark on creating a data dictionary manually to understand all the different attributes, all the different metrics, 
all the different filters, prompts, and so on, and reports, of course, and dashboards that we have in MicroStrategy, and link it all the way back manually. What that data dictionary has helped, helped us understand is everything I mentioned about the KPI. So the KPI is basically like a child of that document. That data dictionary document um, has about 15,000 fields and it's still growing. <laughs> uh, we're not yet done, you know, but we've been able to utilize that document to be able to now form the KPI list because with that document, we're actually seeing all the metrics that are duplicated, right? Uh, in in mm -hmm. our system right now, like I said, because of how we built the additional data on top of the data warehouse, that's why you have that cobweb of fields. So it works for us now, but as our business grows, we've realized it's not sustainable. And hence we're embarking on that futuristic car that we call the next gen data architecture project, utilizing you know, Octopi to understand certain pieces to help us drive that, right? So. It's very, very key to have that data lineage because without that lineage, it's impossible to do this, <laughs> right? I don't know how you would do it. We're just starting with a catalog and putting the fields in. It's going to be very simplistic. It will not be holistic, like I said. It wouldn't have all the different components. So the data lineage is where you want to start from to understand the components and be able to document that, as you can see, in one of brand's use cases, it was able to export all the aspects of that field to Excel, right? Um, and that's really stemming all the way from the data lineage. You're able to actually see what that field impacts, right? The number of reports, the number of processes, and so on and so forth. So if the lineage was not there, right, um, the catalog would not be useful. <laughs> essentially. Right. So this is why it's very key, you know, having the lineage first and then going into the catalog. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, that there is a debate on this concept. Uh, there will, you know, there will be a uh, person that they will say, you need to start in parallel, like you have the lineage and then you focus on the most used assets in catalog. So you're doing this in parallel could right. be also a great approach, a selective approach that you do this in parallel, but uh, starting with just let's have a mass upload it with all the assets in the catalog and then starting with a project, uh, it's, it's very tough. This is why it's taking yep. a long time to implement it. So yeah. it could be that you start with lineage first or you can take an selective approach. But the bottom line is the data lineage is critical to run with the right governance framework. That's correct. Uh, now let's take the second question. The second question would be, let's see if I have it here. Oh, uh, I'm smiling because we talked about at the beginning that you have uh, attended the CDO AI Summit right in Toronto. Yep. And so the question is, um, do you have a Go Easy an initiative of AI readiness. So yeah, we, we're currently, you know, wor working on that um, right now. I mean, I think the key is, are you doing AI for AI or are you doing AI for the business? Um, two different things, right? There's so many components of AI that is out there right now that may not be useful um, for the business. And this is what we're finding on our end. So what our focus is, is specific business cases of, what our branches and stores need for easy financial and easy home in order to be able to better understand our products, in order to be able to better understand the customer um, as well. And essentially, we're going to be building like data um, structures and architecture for those use cases and now put the AI assistant on top. So MicroStrategy has come out with um, an AI chatbot called Auto. And what auto is supposed to be able to do is if you plug it, you know, into your data, it's supposed to be able to help you answer the integrate questions that you have in regards to your products and services and um, also the customer as well. So we're going to be utilizing that functionality very soon. Uh, we're working very closely with the MicroStrategy technical team um, to understand the full capabilities. Um, it's still pretty new out there, maybe a year and a half old. Um, they are about the they're also capabilities that they've put into what they call the hyper intelligence 
um, as well. These are like cards that basically tell you um, information about a place um, or a thing. So basically a noun, um, they have um, the auto chat board embedded in that, whereby you can also ask questions on the hypercard too as well. So there's so many functionalities that we're able to use to help our business, but we're still in the beginning stages. Um, we're not there yet because of how our data is currently um, structured. So we're working towards structuring the data for it to be AI user friendly. Great. Uh, we have one more question. Um, what is your most critical KPI at Go Easy? So our most critical KPI is a KPI called the net principle written. Um, so that basically helps us understand how much um, of money we've been able to disburse mm -hmm. to our customers. Um, so the um, counterpart KPI to that is what we call the total funded amount. That's how much was agreed to be funded. It doesn't mean that that's how much is disbursed to the customer. Mm. The MBW actually tells us what that amount is on a weekly basis. So our senior leaders, especially our um, CEO, is always looking at that number, the MBW, and also the corresponding number, which is called funded, right? So how many loans have we funded on a daily, weekly, or monthly um, basis? That's what really drives our revenue and also growth in what we call our loan book, um, essentially. So um, it's a very key KPI. And this is one of the KPIs that has seven definitions <laughs> that we're okay. trying to now get to one, um, you know, one definition. And it's gone well. We've gotten sign off on that definition. So that's what everyone is going to be using going, um, going forward. Okay. So uh, I have uh, this, the same question. Sorry that everybody's asking about the KPIs, but KPI that is critical that nobody is currently measuring. I'm not sure if you got the question. Nobody is currently measuring or something that you need to measure in the future. Um, so the, the number of new KPIs, you know, for our banking data, especially, that's a new space that we've just ventured into, open banking, um, mm -hmm. where we're still trying to understand the key um, KPIs that will help us to be able to measure performance in relation to our loans. So essentially, what we're using that data for is to be able to determine if we should lend um, to certain people um, because their credit information is not enough. Um, so mm -hmm. we use like their banking details to be able to determine if we can lend to them, right? So those are some of the KPIs we're currently building across all our business units. We've been able to um, apply some at the um, Easy Financial business unit, but Glenn Care is still coming um, and we're working closely on that. I was actually talking to one of our VPs yesterday about this, um, you know, how we're going to be utilizing that data um, in the future and deriving KPIs from it. So banking is one of the key areas that we see is going to be very helpful for us to be able to drive more sales um, in, in our business. Hey, so Basically, the data is, it's worth money. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's it, right? <laughs> data is gold in that sense. Um, and I'm, you know. It, it, it we, is a commodity, yeah. right? And I think it's important. The, the reason why, um, you know, a lot of decisions are not made correctly is because they're not data driven. And data is not looked at as a commodity or an, or an asset is just looked at, okay, it's a nice to have. It is a commodity and it is an asset because it has all the information you need to know about how your business is doing, all your products and your services. I don't know how companies, organizations make decisions, effective decisions, that is, okay. without data. It's the key to making any effective decision that will enable your business to grow. And that's why you need all these components in place to be able to understand the data you have. Because without that understanding, you can't make those decisions either, right? So right. data is is the key to growth, in my own, in my own candid opinion, right. for any company or organization. Questions are keep, keep, keep coming, but uh, we're already 50 minutes into the webinar. We're supposed to finish like 10 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> so for, for the forum, uh, Jude and I are available, just reach out. Uh, 
you know, you have our, our contacts uh, in the registration, uh, you know, reach out to us via LinkedIn, uh, by all means. Jide and I are here to help. Um, thank you, Jide, again, for a wonderful session. I learned a lot. Uh, thank you for sharing with us, you know, the, the demo for how you uh, utilize Octopi on a daily basis. Uh, I hope that I'll have you again as my, uh, I, I'm privileged to have you. I'm really thrilled to have you. I, I know that you're busy um, and I hope that, you know, within a quarter from now, I'm already, you know, it, it's recorded. I, no, we, we'll talk again and have another session about something else. Maybe you, maybe about your AI readiness initiative or the new KPIs sure. that you're measuring, but thank you very much. Let's see. Uh, more questions and more questions. Okay, <laughs> okay, we got there. Uh, yeah. I'm, I, I have I have the list of the questions. So for the ones that didn't get an answer, I will make sure that we you know get back to you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, for the ones that skipped a, a, a match, you know the the Euro Cup and, and stuff. Thank you very much for joining us live uh, today. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yes. Th thank you so much for having me. And I do hope this was helpful to you all. Um, we are still growing. I'm not saying we're there yet. There's still a lot of work to be done. And um, I would like to hear from you all too, in terms of what you're doing and um, also how we can be of assistance too. So thank you very much, Zanette, Zhao, Yao. Thank you for having me on this webinar. Thank it's been you. Amazing. Thank you today. Okay. Thank you for joining everyone. See you soon. Bye. Bye.